here. Um, I'm going to be making another video today for you guys about data and in this specific video we are going to talk about pie graphs. Um, right over here I have an example of a pie graph and how it looks like. So when we want to um, talk about pie graphs what I want you to remember is a pie graph where, we, where it gets its name is um, just think about a pie. How does a pie look like um, a pie that you've seen in real life. It's usually circular in shape, um, and that's exactly how a pie graph looks like too. It's circle. And um, when we're thinking also about pies, usually when we eat a pie, we usually eat a slice of pie. Now in graphs, in pie graphs, the data is represented by slices. So as you could see here, there is four um, slices of the pie in purple, blue, red, and green. And each slice is different. Some are bigger and some are smaller. Um, and that just represents our data because some numbers can be larger, some can be smaller. So when we're thinking about a pie graph, just remember it's circle and um, the slices represent the data. So um, let's dive in to this. So this is a pie graph um, about food items. And so um, right over here towards the right, we have a key. And a key tells us um, what each color stands for. So this gives us more information um, about the pie graph so that we're able to read it more accurately. So as you can see here, the blue represents pizza slices. Um, the red represents hot dogs. And they have pictures in the pie graph as well, but um, this key also gives it to us in word form. The green, as you can see here, it's candy. And the purple, as you can see here, it's for cookies. So um, what this pie graph um, talks about is if we go up to here, it says, Taylor is a student at Pine Lakes Elementary. She sold food at the school store during lunch today. Taylor sold pizza slices, hot dogs, candy, and cookies. So each food item that she sold at, um, for the school fair is graphed here below. So this is how many um, cookies she sold, how many pizzas, how many hot dogs, and how many candies. Um, so as you can see here, we just went over that, that the blue area shows how many pizza slices were sold. And um, you could see that when looking at the pie graph, blue has the um, largest color or the largest slice of the pie versus red, green, or purple. Then this just describes it that the red area shows how many hot dogs were sold. The green area shows how much candy was sold. And the purple area shows how many cookies were sold. Okay. Now, um, so typically this is how we would see a pie graph. Um, usually pictures aren't included, but um, up here they did just to get a better visual um, of what each color stands for. But that's why it's so necessary that we use this key right here towards our right because that helps us to know exactly um, what each color stands for. Because without this key, we would have no idea what blue or purple or green or red um, would stand for. So, um, just like in my other videos that I've stated, usually when we're reading um, graphs, we need to be able to read them appropriately because oftentimes questions come up with them. And in order to answer the questions correctly about graphs, we need to um, be able to read a graph and understand the parts of a graph. So, our very first question says, which food item did Taylor sell the most? So... We need to look at our graph and see which one has the biggest slice of the pie. And like I said earlier, blue has the biggest slice. So it would be pizza slices. She sold the most pizza slices. Next question says, which food item did not sell very well? So over here, I'm going to look for the smallest slice of the pie which one has the smallest slice. And um, just from looking at the graph right away, you could see that um, the red part is a smallest slice. 
because it's smaller than green, purple, or blue. So she sold the least amount or the fewest amount of hot dogs. This one says, did Taylor sell more candy or hot dogs? So candy is green and hot dogs is red. So which one had the most of um, or the most sales? So I would say candy because if we compare green to red, we can see that the green um, is a bigger slice of the pie, which means she sold more of this um, than hot dogs. So she sold more candy than hot dogs because this slice of the pie is um, bigger. Now this question says, which food items, so we're looking for two, did Taylor sell equal amounts of? So um, we, we are looking for two slices of the pie that are equal with each other, that the slices have to be equal. So if I'm comparing pizza two hot dogs. So look at the blue um, compared to the red. That's not equal because the blue is way bigger than the red. If I'm comparing um, the red to the green or even to the purple, that's also not equal because look how much bigger the purple slices and the green slices compared to the red. Um, and then also on the other hand, uh, if I'm comparing the blue slice to the purple and the green, that's not equal as well because look how big the blue slice is. So that's not equal um, to any of the other slices. So I can just take away the blue and the red because this is just way too big and this is just way too small. But if I'm looking over here towards the purple slice, and towards the green slice, I can see that those are really equal to each other. They look about the same um, size. So I would say that she sold the equal amounts of cookies and candy, which is a purple and green, because you can just see how um, equal they are in their um, shape compared to um, the blue and the red slices. Now the last question for this says, if Taylor has to stop selling one item, which one would you suggest and why? So um, over here, what we are going to look for is what's the smallest slice? What did she sell the least of? And if she was selling the least of this, that means most people didn't really want to buy it. So the least, the smallest slice is right here, this red, which is um, hot dog. So I would say that Taylor should get rid of the hot dogs because people weren't really buying too many hot dogs. They were mostly buying pizza, as we could see that has the biggest slice of the pie. And the next biggest would be um, the cookies and the candy. So I'm um, getting rid of the hot dogs because that is the smallest slice and not that many people were buying hot dogs. Most people were buying pizza, cookies, and candy because those were the biggest slices um, in our pie graph. So I'm hoping this was a little good introduction for you about how a pie graph looks like and how to read it. So remember, um, the bigger slices mean that there's more numbers and the smaller slices mean there's smaller numbers. So um, this was just one example. We are going to move on to our next one. Um, and this pie graph is about favorite food. So this says, Rock Restaurant surveyed a sample of customers on their favorite food. They made a pie graph with the survey results. Read the pie graph and answer the questions. Okay, so here's our pie graph. Remember, it looks like a circle. And um, here's our slices. We have one, two, three, four, and five. So we have hot dogs, burgers, sandwiches, pizza, and fried chicken. So now let's look at the questions um, that we can answer that relate to this pie graph. So the first question says, which is the most favorite among the customers? So the most favorite, which means most people um, would need to have voted for this to be their favorite. So I'm looking for the biggest number here on my graph. So the biggest number here on my graph would be 
30, which would be the hot dogs. Um, and as you can see, this slice of the pie is also the biggest to represent the biggest number on the pie, which is 30. So the most favorite was hot dog. How many customers liked fried chicken? So I would have to go onto my um, pie graph and just read the number right off of it. So fried chicken, 20. So only 20 people voted for fried chicken as their favorite food. Number three says, which is the least favorite food? So the least favorite would have to be the smallest number and the smallest slice of the pie. So when I'm looking at my pie graph, I'm looking at sandwich. There's only seven people who voted for sandwich as their favorite food. And that is also the smallest slice of the pie. So the answer to number three would be um, the least favorite food was sandwich or sandwiches. Um, how many customers voted for burger as their favorite? So I'm going to go back up here, look at my graph, look for burger, and I can see 25. So 25 people voted for burger as their favorite food. Um, and now for my last question, this says, how many customers participated in this survey? So what I have to do for this question is I need to add up all of these numbers um, because that gives me the total of how many people were asked um, to say, hey, what's your favorite food? So they asked all these people and then they just um, place the results in this pie graph. So now what I need to do is add up all these numbers together. Um, so we're going to start off with 30 and 20. So 30 plus 20 is 50. 30 plus 20 is 50. Now let's go over here and add 50 to 25, which would give me 75. And then I'm going to add 75 with 7, which would give me 82. And then 82 plus 13, which would give me 95. So there was 95 people in total that were asked, what was your favorite food? So all we did was we added one, two, three, four, five, all five numbers together um, to get our total. And when adding, we just need to be uh, mindful about regrouping so that we're doing it correctly to get the right answer. So now we're going to do one more um, because the more we practice, um, it helps us to get better at reading these graphs and answering their questions. So this one says um, it's about camping supplies. So it says Richard's Camping Store is the best for camping gear supplies. They made a pie graph on the sales of certain items during the month of July. Use the graph to answer the questions. Okay, so we have our graph again. And um, on my graph, we have torch, which is like a form of light, as you could see here. And that looks like to be the biggest slice of our pie. Um, it take, it's the biggest slice of the pie, so that means they sold way more torches than all these other items. And then we have bags, tents, and binoculars. So remember when we're looking at a pie graph, we're looking at the slices, the slices, the bigger it is, the more people um, that had voted for this or, or it was the most items sold. And the smaller the slice, it means it was just a less number, as we um, saw in our last example about the favorite foods. So let's go ahead and start with the first question. This says, which item sold the most in Richard's camping store? So we're looking to see... Um, the biggest number, and since there is no numbers um, next to the names here, we can just look at the size of the, um, of the slice of the pie. So the biggest slice of the pie would be right here for torches, which is a form of light. Um, so the item that was sold the most was torch. Um, I'm going to skip this question um, about percentages. And we're just going to go to the next one that says, did the store sell fewer bags or torches? 
So did it sell less bags? or less torches. Now if we're looking and we're comparing torches and bags, we can see that um, bags has a smaller slice of the pie than torches. So that would mean they sold less bags than torches. Okay. Um, for this one, we're just going to ignore the um, this little sign, but is the sales of bags more than the sales of tents. So um, the sales of bags more than the sales of tents. So if we're comparing bags and tents, which one had more of? Which one did they sell the most of? So if we're comparing bags and tents. And um, again, there's no numbers here, but we're just going to look at the slice of the pie um, to see which one is the biggest because the biggest would mean there's more of that that was sold. So if we're comparing bags and tents, we can see that the slice of the bag is bigger. So that means they sold more bags than tents. And the last one, uh, but we're not gonna worry about percentages for now. Um, so I'm hoping that um, by doing these few examples, this was um, a good introduction to what a pie graph is, um, how to read it, and um, that we were able to get some practice in of um, seeing the type of the types of questions that are involved when um, looking at pie graphs. So, um, just to recap, a pie graph is a circle. And the data is represented by slices of the pie, as you can see here. And um, in each pie graph, we always have a title. And our title over here is Camping Supplies. Um, this one does not have a key, as my other one did, um, to represent the food that was sold, like blue was pizza and red was hot dogs. Um, this one just tells us right away. Um, it lists it on our pie slice that torch, this is a bag, this is a tent, and this is binoculars. Um, and there's also pictures over here um, just to show. Usually you won't always get pictures, but this is nice um, as a visual support. And that um, the bigger of the slice for the pie means that that has the biggest number. And the smallest slice of the pie means that's the smallest number. So a lot of questions will be just looking at the graph and just seeing, hey, how big was the torch? Um, how small was the tent? Um, and then it can ask you questions about addition, like how we did from our last example where we had to add up all of the um, people that were asked, what was your favorite food? There could be subtraction problems as well that could say how, um, if I could just, there could be subtraction problems that can say how many more people voted for hot dogs than fried chicken. So if I had to subtract 30 with 20, I would say 10. 30 minus 20 is 10. So um, it could be subtraction problems like what I just stated, like how many more. And then it could be addition problems like what's the total of everyone that voted for their favorite food like we did. Um, so just remembering that the bigger the slice, the more people. And the smaller the slice, the less people. And a pie graph is a circle represented by slices um, to see how our data is represented in this graph. So I'm hoping this was a good introduction to a pie graph. And um, you will be able to practice this skill with the work that we will be handing out.